I'm Shelly and I'm kicking off our gardening coach live series for the weekend. Um, I'm here to answer any kind of questions you might have about your indoor house plants. Okay, so first of all, I'm going to, while we're gearing up for that, I'm going to tell you about this star of the show here. This is a very rare plant that we just got in here and it's called the philodendron birkin and it's an upright philodendron. So normally the philodendrons we have uh, or you're used to, they would be cascading, um, but this one grows upright. It's the same kind of care you would have for a philodendron. So it would be bright light, but not direct light. And then you're just gonna water it when it's dry. It's very simple. And we have these in the garden rooms. I mean, they're brand new, hot off the presses. So um, you wanna get them this weekend <laughs> before they run out. And then I was gonna tell you about some of the ficus plants that we have. Now, usually everybody knows about the ficus lyrata, right? But there's so many different kinds of ficus plants. So I was gonna highlight some of the different kinds we have. Um, this one here is called the Ali. This is an Ali. And then we have the ficus Audrey, which is a really nice um, kind of uh, art, uh, artistic, um, more you know upright that you're gonna use. And then you have the McLean. This is a ficus McLean. We also have the ficus triangularis. This, a lot of people don't realize that this rubber tree here is a ficus. This is the, um, uh, what is the name of that one? Ficus <laughs> decora. This is a ficus decora. And then we have the ficus lyrata, which everybody is aware of. And then this is the microcarpa. And it's very similar. This is a very similar uh, to the McLean. We also have the ficus, the very common ficus benjamina. A lot of times you'll see this plant, it's uh, kind of braided. It has a braided stem to it. Um, that's the ficus benjamina. Now, I also wanted to show you that the, uh, this, the rubber tree also comes in a lot of different varieties. So they're, you, know, you can use them in any, any kind of decor that you have. Now the, the care on these ficus are more light than you would give to say a, a more common plant like a philodendron. Um, <clears throat> so you're gonna get bright light, uh, but m more bright light and not direct light. So you don't ever want any sun to be uh, shining in on your plants from the windows uh, because that will burn the leaf. Also, you're gonna give them uh, uh, water when they're needed. Every, every environment is different. So, you know, I can't say, what are your, what are your ficus once a week? That doesn't work. You have to figure out what is best for your environment. So you're gonna, the best way to do that is to get a moisture meter and you put the moisture meter in the plant, three, three different areas in your plant. And that's gonna help you see how, if it needs water, it's gonna say moist, wet, and you wanna water it when it's like five or less. And you're gonna water the whole plant. You're gonna water the entire bottom of the plant so that the water is covering the entire pot. Otherwise, um, like these, like the ficus lyrata, you could get, if you don't have the water all the way around, it might not get up to all the roots and you'll get those black spots in the middle of your leaf. And it looks like we got a question. Go ahead. We have a question from Julie Handler on Instagram asking if you have a whole house filter that has softener, is that water bad for plants? No, actually that's better for plants. Um, you, you don't wanna have, the chlorine in the water is what's bad for the plants. So even if you don't have a softener or a filter, if you take your water and um, put it in a bucket and leave it out overnight, that it kind of eliminates the chlorine in it and you can use that for your plants. Otherwise, if you do have uh, non-filtered water and you use that, that chlorine, it'll get brown on the edges of your plants. So like on the tips, it'll get, you'll get brown spots. Another question? We have another question from on Instagram for Lily Pink, Pinkies Up. Any tips on taking care of bromeliads? Bromeliads. Okay. So bromeliads, um, I wish I had one here to show you. They have one, they're very tropical. They have one bright, usually one bright bloom that comes out of them. And the rest of them are green leaves that come out. And the way you want to water those, you want to let it dry out completely and then water it around the soil and also down into the leaves. There'll be like a little pocket and you want to put water right down in there. 
Um, and that bloom, that bloom itself, is going to last you, you know, depending on your environment, two to three months probably. And then once that bloom is gone, you'll get a little, another little growth that's coming out of the side. That's called the pup. So the big plant is the mother plant with the, with the big bloom on it. And then you'll get a little pup off the side. And you're going to take that pup and replant that pup. And the mother plant is going to die off and you're done with that. Any more questions? Not at this time, but if you want to continue on. All right. So um, let's see. What can I talk about? So this, let's talk more about the ficus lyrata since a lot of people have those. So uh, earlier I was talking about how you were going to water the entire pot. Make sure you get that pot entirely watered through. So the best way to do it is to take it out on your patio. You want to take this pot or one of these bigger pots and set it inside of another pretty pot, a pot that looks nice. And then you'll take it out. You'll take it out of that pot, take it out on your patio, hose it down, get all the leaves cleaned off real good because if you have um, uh, dust on the leaves, that's not good either. So that's the best way to water it. And you want to make sure you do that. If your moisture meter says five or less, and also you could just stick your finger down in about up to your knuckle and see if it is um, moist or not. If it's, if it's dry on the top, even if it's moist down on the bottom, it does, you still need to water the top part of it. You don't want it to dry out completely for ficus lyrata because all of the ficus plants actually, um, they, they go into a little bit of a shock. So if you move, say I take my ficus lyrata and I move it to the other side of the room, which has the same amount of light, it's still probably gonna get a little bit of a shock. So, you know, you're gonna um, just be patient with it. Don't get upset if you lose a couple leaves off the bottom, it's gonna be fine. We have a question here. One is, what is the best way to transition a plant from your nursery? It's on Instagram, a healthy balance is asking. A, a plant? Best way to transition a plant from, the, from a nursery. Okay, so indoor plants, I'm gonna focus on that because that's what I'm talking about. <laughs> um, so, like I was t uh, speaking about before, anytime you move a plant from uh, an environment that it's been in, uh, maybe it has more light and you're moving it to a, a lower light area, then um, it's going to have some kind of a shock, but you know, you're just going to be patient with it. Uh, if it starts looking bad, like maybe you don't have enough light there, move it. Move it to a lighter place. One more question here. We have what on Facebook, Amanda Jenkins Carnava said, asked, what can you do when a fiddle is too tall, early, early to the ceiling? Okay, so what you're, you can cut that down. So um, let me move this out so you can see. So what you're gonna do, is you can say you got a shoot that's coming up here. Uh, we're just gonna pretend like this is up here. You're gonna take that, you're gonna cut that down onto one of the shoots. You can actually cut it down as, uh, right above one of the nodules or one, right above one of the leaves. You're gonna cut it down and then you'll get another branch that comes out. You can actually uh, take that branch then that you took off uh, you know that you cut off already and you can take all the bottom leaves off put it in some water and put it in a bright lit area you'll get roots growing on that and then you're gonna have another plant but it's gonna take about a month or so for that to happen for the roots to get nice and full if you had it in the right environment and then you can transplant it into soil perfect Any, okay so we're gonna keep going here um, I was talking about the ficus um, let's see and moving um, let's see. Oh, so let's say you get some uh, bugs on your plants. One of the best things you could get is this neem oil. It, you want to try to use uh, something that's very organic. Um, a lot of times you'll get maybe white fly, you'll have little little flies that fly around, or you'll get a little sticky, sticky substance on the stem. Mm -hmm. um, if you spray this on, it should help. And you, when you're spraying it on, you want to make sure that your plant is well watered. You don't want to spray any kind of uh, um, insecticide or uh, in, in insect defying uh, chemical onto your plant when it's wet or when it's dry. Another thing you can do is um, in the summer months, you're going to want to fertilize your indoor plants. Now, I don't recommend fertilizing right away when you get home with a plant from the, from the nursery. Uh, you want to let it to adjust to your environment. But after a month or so, if it's still looking good and you're getting new growth and everything's happy, then you can go ahead and start. Um, fertilizing about every other watering. Uh, and then cool. once we get to the winter months, you're gonna stop 
fertilizing and just kind of let it be through the winter because it's kind of a non-growing season, less light. And we have another question. Another question here by Marion Drum on Instagram. I do have a south facing window. Any chance of a living plant, even seasonal recommendations? Well, if you're getting bright sun inside a window, any plant, any plant you put in there, if it's got sun directly on it, it's gonna burn. So, you know, it, it's, I don't recommend much for that area. Another question. Another question from Lily Pinkies Up. My son wants to know how much light does a bromeliad like? Okay, so they're very high light. I mean, that's a tropical plant. So you're gonna either put that outside on your patio, on your covered patio, or you're gonna have it in a very well lit area. Great. On Facebook, we have another question is um, from Laura Di Paola. Do you, the leaves have to be wet or just soil? Um, for fertilizing, I'm, uh, or for the insecticides, I'm assuming, assuming um, as long as the plant is wet, not the leaves. You don't want to spray it onto a wet surface. You want it. You just want the the plant itself to be in a moist environment. And and Maggie McGuire, Mac, MacGyver um, uh, requested on Facebook. I think I think one of my house plants has gnats. It's annoying. How can I get rid of them? So usually gnats come when you have your plants too wet. So I suggest letting it dry out. Just let it dry out. The gnats should go away. Um, a lot of times uh, the way to discover whether you're watering or not watering enough is if your plant, if your leaves are turning yellow, that means you're watering too much. If they're brown and crispy, you're probably not watering it enough. Great. Uh, another question from on Instagram with Am Amber Hammond is asking, how much light does a ficus need? So I would, that's kind of a bright. You want to go. You want to be much brighter than, um, like, with a, a philodendron or a Stansevieria, something the mother-in-law's tongue. You want to. You actually need probably. I, I can't tell you exactly how much, but it's going to be a, a very bright light, but not direct light from the sun. So, like, in front of a window, but not where it's coming inside the window. Okay, and then I have another question from Lisa. Soros is on Instagram asking, I bought a croton type topiary after, but about a month it dropped off all its leaves. It started to grow back leaves, but never fully recovered and dropped them again. Can you tell me how to take care of that? Well, that sounds like it was already stressed. And I can't, I, and without seeing it, I, I really couldn't tell you if it was from not enough water or too much water but something was if you got new growth and it happened again you were something was wrong from the beginning <laughs> so. another question on facebook from neda guzman is how tall does a fiddle tree grow well it depends on the environment i mean uh in southern california they do grow them outside once they're acclimated from you know to be outside and they can grow into a ginormous tree so it just keeps growing as long as the environment is conducive to that. Great. And? <laughs> no other questions at this time. Okay, so are we gonna wrap that up? Okay, so don't forget to uh, listen to tomorrow morning, uh, nine o'clock, David Rizzo will be on, uh, another live stream for Edible Gardens and also follow us on Facebook and Instagram. Tell all your friends about us. And we can also, we have lots of YouTube videos on how to, on how to do in, just about anything in the garden. So thanks for watching and we'll see you tomorrow morning.